Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? Today we're talking about color spaces on the Oculus Quest. Let's go! Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of VR. Scoosh! My name is Laz USK, and today we're talking about color spaces on the Oculus Quest which came out not too long ago. And by the way, this is not sponsored. I bought it with my hard earned cash to review for you. It is actually available on discount if you purchase it from the Oculus Rift store. I don't know for how long though, so you may want to hurry. It's very affordable and it's pretty cool. So let's roll down the countdown and check it out. Color Spaces has been created for the younger ones, but I have to admit that I had such a really good time after spending about an hour that I really wanted to make a video the very next day after trying it. The app loads very fast on the first go and you'll be greeted with some really nice music. I have to say that the main menu is comparable to the Ghost Giant and for me the Ghost Giant's main menu was actually one of the most beautifully done on any Oculus Quest. VR experience. There's also a tutorial when you load the app for the very first time, which is very useful for the young ones who are actually going to be able to pick it up very easily. At the moment, Color Space has 13 scenes, which you can choose from four main books. So when you select the book, it will come closer towards you and open up magically unraveling the four or three different stories in each book. Then all you have to do very simply is select the level and you'll see a little pendulum wheel turning around with like a tree on it, which is basically loading the next scene for you. So when the scenes load for the very first time, everything will be basically grayed out and whitewashed. Of course, there's no colors added because you have to add them. And then similarly to tilt brush, your tools will actually be on your left hand. Basically the tools are very simple, it's purely a color picker and there are two ways to choose your colors. They pre-rearrange all the colors in primary family so you don't really have to think so much and you can really play very easily but there is a button on the side which you can press and it will flip the color picker around and then what you can then do is pick pretty much all the colors in between the primaries so that you can make the game more fun and more imaginative for you. In your right hand you'll have the one so all you do is you bring the one to the color picker and as you basically mousing over the one will change color identifying and letting you know that that would be the color that you pick then you just press your trigger or one of the buttons and then boom it will select the color you aim it towards something and then it will start to color as you progress in the levels you'll see that some of the details get more and more refined where you can actually start to color specific parts of a tree or of an animal instead of having to color the entire body or the entire shape. So it really gets more and more creative as you progress along the gameplay. The music in the gameplay is absolutely phenomenal. As I mentioned before from the start, it's extremely relaxing, but more so than relaxing, it's actually motivational kind of music as well. It feels very uplifting. And when you start to color some of the areas inside of the scenes, the music changes also. So this feeling of upliftment continues and really brings you within the story of the original art. And when you color certain aspects of the scene, the developers also added some special sound effects to add to that feeling of the art. You can also hear other things as you're actually in the scene. For example, the water or the waterfalls, as well as the birds chirping or the wind going through your ears. So it's really magical. If we dive more into the graphics side of things, the devs have really done a great job. They've done what most people could do, which is to keep things as simple as possible. And the simplicity is what really works for this app. Now, when you splash some color in specific areas, it just makes a lot of sense. Each color don't go everywhere. It just goes where it's supposed to go. And you can really just let your imagination run wild. The devs did a really good job. They really utilized the Quest CPU to its full capacity. They aren't very noticeable noticeable super jagged edges and things like that. I mean, to me, the game just doesn't feel like a low quality game whatsoever. It's honestly very hard to find fault with the graphics in terms of the coloring. I really like the fact that there's a lot of gradients and shadows, which works really well with the colors you choose are applied to the scene. As I mentioned, there is currently a discount for this app at the time of this recording. I'm not quite sure how long it will last and it's available on the Oculus Rift store. I don't think it's available on the Oculus Quest store because I didn't see the same pricing. So do and go and check that out. Before I give you my final thoughts on color space, I just want to give a quick shout out to all those who went to view and comment on one of the previous videos, which is all about VD versus Link using Half Alex. You guys are awesome. Remember to leave a comment below so I can give you a shout out in the next video. 
all in all for me, it was a really nice experience. It was one of the first times where I really felt I didn't think about anything. It was like going in meditation and going to another world and just feeling extremely relaxed, focusing on purely one thing, which was adding colors here and there and creating something mystical. It works really well with virtual desktop as well. I was 10 meters away with the door closed and the wall in between. I had absolutely no issues. I love the fact that you can color all types of things in different environments from being in the woods to going underwater. And then you see when you color something, sometimes things come to life or you see something appearing from the water. It's really magical. It's more than just painting. It's like a little story that you're part of. I also enjoy the parts where I can color the sky and then suddenly everything comes to life. It's whew, sometimes it can take your breath away. There are a few issues here and there. For example, when I paint something, sometimes the haptic gets stuck and the controller keeps buzzing for, <laughs> for maybe a minute or something. Uh, so, but I think it's generally occurs when there's the scene is finished and it's trying to tell me to move on to the next scene maybe. So that's something that the developers might want to look at. Now, because this is a coloring book and not a drawing book, I do wish that sometimes it would be nice that I could choose specific part of my painting to be darker or to be brighter, but I don't have control on that. So I can just pick the color. Even if I pick the darkest color, sometimes on some areas, it will come out quite pale. So it would be nice to have a little bit more control on some of the areas where, you know, if I wanted to be much darker, I could do so. What would be awesome is also have the ability to save colors that I chose outside of the primary wheel. A little bit like in King Spray, where you could basically have all the different colors, save one color so that you can color different things and then go back to your original color and reuse that that color for other parts of the scene because I found myself doing that a lot and then I had to try and find match the same color. Of course, it didn't really matter, but it, I'm just saying it would be nice to have that as an additional tool as well. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe, share some love so that you and I together we can grow the community and help as many people as possible in VR because ultimately that is what it's all about. All right, until next time, take it easy and as always, DJ, take it away.